What's up, boys? I hope you all are doing good. Thank you for tuning in today. My name is Brent Allen, and today I'm going to teach you guys how I make my Everglades style fried fish. Now, in this video, I'm going to be using crappie fillets, but you can use this application on any panfish, really. You know, bluegill, shell cracker, uh, even trout, redfish, uh, grouper. I mean, you name it. If you like frying fish, this is a excellent way of preparing it. The reason why I like doing it this style over something like beer batter fish is because it's, you know, it, it's pretty easy to prepare and you can also keep it in the fridge for up to about 24 hours uncooked. Uh, so if you want to prep it the day before, cover it up, throw it in the fridge, and it only helps this breading bind to the filet overnight. And as opposed to something like beer batter fish, which don't get me wrong, I love beer batter fish, but it's so freaking labor intensive, especially when you're cooking for a large quantity of people at, you know, for like a fish fry or a party, because you have to sit there, drop one filet in at a time, make sure they don't stick together. Anyway, this is my go-to for, for doing fish fries. So I'm excited to share this with y'all. And I'm also going to show you guys how I make my homemade mashed potatoes and an absolute baller, baller mushroom gravy. So if you guys are into that, stay tuned and let's get into it. All right guys, so before we get started, I'm gonna show you the breading that I use. This is Everglades All-Purpose Breader. Now you can find this at Winn-Dixie, Publix, most supermarkets should carry this. You can even get it online. Uh, but this is, this is the magic right here. This is really good stuff. Along with the Everglades, we're gonna use all-purpose flour. So the way we do this is I'm going to coat the filet first in flour, now we're going to do egg wash, and then we dip it into the Everglades as the final topping breading. And I'm going to show you guys how I make the egg wash right now, if you're not familiar. So I'm just going to go ahead and set that aside. So i got two eggs here. I'm going to crack that open there. Alright, so i got two eggs in here, and you can adjust this accordingly depending on how much fish you're cooking. Uh, the quantity that I'm doing, which I believe is like 12 to 15 fillets, if that. Um, so this is all I'm really going to need. But if you're doing a larger batch, you're probably going to want more eggs, more milk. And I'm using unsweetened almond milk because I do not like regular cow's milk. But you guys can use whatever you like. So what I'll do is pour in. I, you know, I don't, this isn't like a full-blown recipe to the T measurements. This is kind of me winging it until I get the consistencies and looks that I want. So if you're looking for that kind of specifics, you ain't going to get it here. So basically you're just whisking up that milk with the eggs. Really ain't nothing to this. I'm sure most of you have made egg wash before. All right, so here I have my bowl of fresh crappie fillets. Mm -mm. All right, so I'll typically use a pair of tongs. You can just use your bare hands, but I find that tongs, it's a little less messy. But basically what we do, I'll drop in, depending on your container, but I'm gonna do three in this container, just like that. Slap on that lid. Shake them up. You don't have to do the Tupperware method like I do, but this is just a little less mess, kind of the way I prefer to do things. You just want to shake off that excess flour. And then we're going to drop them into the egg wash. Just like that. And we take our tongs, just make sure you got a nice coating of that egg wash on there. And then we drop them into the Everglades. And you want to try to drip off as much of that egg wash as possible, and that's going to reduce the amount of clumps in your Everglades breading. So I still have one in that egg wash there, but I can't quite fit three. I mean, I could, but I'm kind of picky about not overcrowding it. So you just toss them around in there, and then you end up 
with that. <coughs> Whew. And I'll warn you guys about this Everglades breading. It's got a little bit of bite to it, so when you're handling this breading, it'll it'll get you. So I just like to make sure it's fully coated. And that's what it should look like. Just nice and evenly coated. And then I just lay it down on the plate there. So I'm going to grab number three in here. Let that drip off. Drop them on in. Like I said, you can put the cover on, you can leave it off. You know, it's all about your own specific style. But this is just kind of how I like doing it. If I'm just doing one, I probably won't slap the cover on. All right, that looks good. Layer on down. All right, so you guys kind of get the gist here. I'll do another another round here just so you can see. That's yeah, a little bit of a small one, so I'll throw in a number four. Give it a toss. Drop it on in. Drop it on in. And like I said, using tongs, it's a <laughs> quite a bit less messy than using your hands. Otherwise, you're going to end up at the sink washing your hands every other fillet. Toss. Mm -hmm. I think you boys are ready for this. All right. I just like to give one last flip and pat down. Make sure that seasoning has sealed up that fillet real good. I'll lay it on the plate. You know this. This is also time-consuming in its own way. But like I said, you know, when you drop this into the fryer, they don't stick together. And if they do, it's very, very minimal. Nothing like doing beer batter, because beer batter, they'll just fuse together. And it's a real pain in the butt to deal with. All right, yeah, I still got a couple in here. Put the bad boys in. Yeah, so as you can see, I definitely made way too much egg wash, which is fine. I don't care. I can spare eggs and milk and one more thing I'll mention you want to make sure your fillets are dry you don't want to drop them in when they're soaking wet dripping water you want to make sure you pat dry your fillets before you drop them into the initial flour you can just use that with a paper towel you can use that with a, a dish cloth but uh, I typically use paper towels and uh, yeah just make sure they're not soaking wet. That's the main thing. <coughs> oh, Lordy. Everglades. Yeah, this isn't a spicy seasoning. It's just, it's got some pepper in there. And you guys know when you breathe in pepper, it's, whew, it'll get you. All right. So we're done with that prep. So now that's our finished product. And what I'm going to do on over here and drop her in the fridge just like that oh man look at this got a got a straggler that was left in the egg wash that I missed yeah it happens plop that bad boy on there like that all right so make sure you clean your surface off real good next thing we're gonna do is peel potatoes and I'm using uh, the gold potatoes not russets, but golds. But you can use whatever kind of potatoes you want. These are just what I had on hand. And just drop them into the water. And you can also cut these smaller, you know, if you want them to cook a little quicker, more consistent. You know, I've, I have done it both ways, but you know what? This is 
these aren't huge potatoes to begin with so I'm not super worried about that if you guys don't have a peeler you can use a small knife just got to be a little more careful not to cut yourself get out of there yeah and you also may be wondering, well, that's a lot of potatoes, Brent. You gonna eat all of them yourself? You're like, you dang right I am. Maybe not in one sitting, but I love leftover mashed potatoes. You can make potato cakes the next day when they're cold. You can, you can do a lot of cool stuff with mashed potatoes. And there's never too many. It's one of my favorite parts of Thanksgiving is mashed potatoes. All right. That's looking good. All right, poured out some of that water. It's a little bit too much. Um, so I do like garlic mashed potatoes. So what I'll do is I'll take some of these cloves, drop them in there to boil with the potatoes. And what I'll do is I'll end up mashing those with the potatoes. So yeah, I like a lot of garlic. So I'm gonna set that to the side and prepare my broccoli. So for steamed broccoli, I have this little apparatus over here. This is a little steamer. Uh, I got this off Amazon, but basically you put a little bit of water in that bottom pot there, put this on top, and then it's got a little lid that you put on top there. And it'll steam what you got. So. Nothing really much here. Kind of do your broccoli florets as large as you like them. I kind of like mine a bit larger, like this. But you do you, boo. I got a buddy of mine who's probably rolling in his grave right now. Shout out to Billy. He hates when I cook on camera. Absolutely hates it. Guess what, pal? You're getting it, and you're watching it. He'll eat the crap out of my fried fish, though, I can tell you that. All right, so I got all my broccoli in the steamer there, and this is all for the compost pile. The compost bin, rather. If y'all ain't got a compost bin, I highly recommend it, because then you can get your worms for uh, shell cracker season, and you gotta buy them. All right, and I also have some green onion here, some chives, that I'm going to add to my mashed potatoes once I've got them mashed up. I'm going to add this in after I chop them up. So I'm just going to set that to the side for now. All right, so next up, I'm going to dice up some onion here. And what I'm going to do is start getting ready to make my mushroom gravy. Now I'm going to do this by making a roux. Let's get this diced up here. Come on below. Slit on top. Now you don't have to put onions in this uh, gravy recipe. I just like sauteed onions in it. I freaking love onions on everything, so. That's just me. But again, you do you. And if you guys don't know this little technique of dicing onions, go ahead and have an onion like this. And put slits down on the top all the way through just like that and then come in depending on how large the onion is this is a pretty small one so I'm coming in twice along the side and then one towards the top and then just slice down and then you have your diced onions little trick of the trade just do a courtesy chop afterwards like this my 1950s stove here let me go ahead and crank up some heat 
and then mushrooms so you can dice these up you can leave them you know these are all these are pre-sliced white mushrooms you can get the baby bellows if you like those you know it, it don't freaking matter it's up to y'all but um, what I'll typically do for mushroom gravy is I won't dice them fine but I will kind of have them like this that way they're not large chunks like this on the gravy but if you like them like that keep them like that this is just how I like to do it so just kind of pick through these and have them up and now I try not to cook with too much oil like this is just a personal thing of mine for health reasons which I know sounds stupid because I'm making fried fish however for most things like I don't eat fried fish every day like I'll eat fried fish I mean I can count the number of times a year on my hand that I eat fried fish so um, I don't cook with oil super often and for this you don't you don't need oil in the pan because there's so much moisture in mushrooms to begin with I will add some of this veggie stock periodically as it's cooking with the uh, with the onions this should be a pretty good amount of mushrooms right there. The rest of these I'll throw in the fridge for later. I'm also gonna dice up some garlic here. Y'all use uh, the pre-minced garlic. That's fine too. I'm not really, you know, some of these cooks online, they're super anal about that stuff. I don't freaking give a crap. Certain things I get serious about, like frying fish, because it's one of the things I love to do the most, I guess, but and everything else it's just like you have fun with it i mean cooking's not meant to be super serious unless you're working in a five-star freaking restaurant the more serious you take it the less likely you are to cook for yourself which i think more people should be doing instead of going out to freaking eat all the time especially with the way prices are and everything cook your own food you'll thank yourself and your wallet will as well start pour these mushies in the monies. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Alright, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to saute this down. And then once that's sauteed down, I'm going to start making my roux and I'll show you guys how to do that. Nothing to it. A little bit of butter and flour and so i like to use this butter here the Kerrygold garlic and herb butter this stuff is jam up oh yeah it's just starting to break down pretty good here it's a little bit longer before i start the roux so now we got this cooking down pretty good i'm going to start to add some of my spices first up is thyme Next up is sage. Put a wee bit in there like that. And finally, some rosemary. And this is optional, you know. You guys can season this stuff however you like. Hit it with a little cracked pepper. Splash of salt. The Himalaya salt. Woo! That bad boy's boiling over there. Getting it done. Alright, so now I'm going to start making my roux. So what I'm going to do just kind of part the stuff to the side this mm. God, stuff smells so good so I'm just gonna drop in a chunk there like that you can use regular butter you don't have to use this fancy stuff 
All right. So now that we've got that broken down pretty good, I'm going to start adding my flour. just start mixing it in with that butter and the idea here is you want to cook off that flour taste start kind of mixing that in with everything This usually takes, I don't know, a few minutes for it to kind of cook down. People say you can kind of smell a nutty flavor sometimes. I guess that's true. There's kind of a distinct smell. So that's starting to smell pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is add in a vegetable stock. And this is roughly... Eh, I'm going to say close to two cups. I'm going to just start mixing that in. I'm going to crank up the heat a bit. And this will start to thicken. And right now I'm going to go ahead and add in a little bit of washer sister sauce. Just a skosh there and some tamari light. This is the 50% uh, less sodium, but uh, you know, soy sauce can work. Kind of get that incorporated in there with everything else. Just kind of want to keep it stirring. And as it starts to thicken, if it starts to get a little bit too thick, add in a little bit more vegetable stock. Ain't no big deal. It's already starting to look pretty good, boys. I imagine if you don't like mushrooms, this does not look very appealing to you. But I absolutely love mushrooms. So that's starting to thicken up pretty good, as you can see. So I'm going to go ahead and do a taste test. And see where I'm at flavor-wise. Is so good. I think I'm going to throw in a skosh more tamari and just a hint more of the washer sister sauce. Just a skosh. I'm going to throw in some cracked pepper. Yes, my pepper grinder has a flashlight on it. Very expensive. Turn down the heat a bit now that we're starting to get thickened up pretty good. Wish you guys could smell this. My goodness. I think we're in there like swimwear now, boys. I suppose everyone kind of likes their gravy, different consistencies, but to me, this is, this is about perfect. See how it rolls off that spoon? It's not too thick. It's not too runny. You got them diced sauteed onions, garlic, and mushrooms in there. Ooh. Well, I'm waiting for the potatoes to boil. I figure I'd come out here and say hi to Bun Bun. Say hi, Bun Bun. Oh boy. Oh boy. You dropped your treat, Bun Bun. Ooh. Thank you, Dick. Whoa, boy, look at that snoot. So I think our potatoes are about done. You can just do the fork test. If they go through nice and smooth, they're ready to rock. So, let's go ahead and strain this bad boy. I usually leave a little bit of water in there.
All right. And I have my oil heating up for my fish right now. I want that to 350 degrees. All right, so now I'm going to take my masher. You guys can use a potato ricer, uh, but I like the masher. So I like my mashed potatoes, a little bit of chunk to them. I got nothing against creamy, fully creamy mashed potatoes, but you know, I like a little bit of texture in mine. So we're just gonna give them a good old mash here. And this all as I strain that out, all that garlic is still in there. Like I said, I don't wanna I don't wanna waste that. That's that good good. Let garlic infuse in the water with the potatoes. Mm. Alright, so now what I'm gonna do is start doing the finishing touches on these potatoes. So I'm gonna start adding in my milk until I start getting the consistency that I want. Because right now they're too dry. Leave that there for a second and I'm going to start dicing up my chives, green onions here. Mm. Yeah, you got to have green onions with your potatoes, man. I'm telling you, game changer. All right, scoop them up. La douche. La douche. All right. So I'm also going to throw in some salt. and some fresh cracked black pepper. These puppies are gonna be bomb diggity boys. Mm, especially with that mushroom gravy on top. Look at that, just, just waiting. Waiting for that mash. All right, so we need a little bit more milk in here. I know some people throw in butter and stuff. I don't really do that. Um, just because, you know, I'm, I'm going to be topping it with gravy anyway. The heck do I need extra fat in there if I don't... If I'm not really even going to enjoy the taste. And if I'm not doing gravy and I want butter, I won't even add it to the full mash. I'll just put it on top when I when I go to serve it. So now we're starting to get starting to get somewhere here. So I'm gonna do take a little taste test. Oh man, that garlic! Oh man, so good. All right, so we need a splash more milk, more salt. We're gonna go a little bit further on that pepper. Looks like my broccoli's done as well. So I'm done mashing, so now I'm switching over to a spoon. And I wish you guys could smell this. My goodness gracious. Between the garlic and the, the green onion. Alright, so we got our chilled fillets and you can see they're they're nice and uh firmed up with that uh that breading on top we're ready to rock boys let's do this thing all right we're 
just lean them on in there. I'm not going to go any crazier than that. And if you guys have ever cooked crappie or really any panfish before, you you probably already know it does not take long. So, I mean, unless you want your breading really, really crispy, you know, you can overcook it a little bit. But I don't like to go too far on that because, you know, I just, then it's just too firm. I like a nice flaky, just falls apart. This is going to be a meal fit for a king. And with this being fresh oil, meaning I have not cooked anything in this peanut oil prior to this, it won't get as golden brown as it would if it were semi-used. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just the way it is when you're cooking with fresh oil. So you can always, like I mentioned, you can always cook it a little bit longer if you want to get it a little bit more brown. But usually with fresh oil like this, you're going to, the fish is going to be done, but it may not fully look like it, especially with panfish like crappie. And we're ready to go. We got our fish frying up, got our mushroom gravy, got our freaking mash and our broccoli. And this is going to be so good. And so when I pull the fish out of here, what I'm going to be using is this Everglades heat seasoning. Uh, this is pretty spicy. It's not, I mean, for me, it's not too bad, but people that are sensitive to spicy stuff, they may not like this. Um, but what I'd recommend, obviously, salt and pepper is a good thing to put on top. Um, what else we got here? We got the regular Everglades seasoning. That's pretty good. Um, but this this stuff is my go-to, which is so freaking good. It gives it a little bit of heat to it. So if you guys are over in the store and want to try out something, I'd recommend picking that up. All right, boys. So I think we're ready for the first batch to come out here. Like I said, you may look at this, and I know it's kind of hard to tell with my crappy lighting, but, I mean, it's got a little golden brown to it. But you may be like, ah, oh, that's not cooked all the way. Trust me. It is cooked all the way. I promise you. It's just that, that brand new oil that makes it look deceiving. All right. So like I said, I take this Everglades heat, sprinkle that right on top. Mmm. Give that little extra bite. And now if you're cooking fish in a pan like this, frying fish in the pan like this once you pull fish out make sure you recheck your temp because usually when you pull them out the temperature is going to be dropped down from what it was from cooking all that fish and if you drop that fish in when it's too cold it's going to get all soggy and it's not going to be good so as you can see right here we're sitting at 300 so we've got to wait just a bit longer to put in the rest of that fish i'm going to go ahead and munch on some of these potatoes while I'm waiting. I'm freaking so hungry. All right, we're ready for the next batch here. And again, in case you guys are wondering, this is just peanut oil. I mean, you can use vegetable oil or, um, you know, whatever. But I feel like peanut oil gives fried fish the best flavor. And that's that. Are you guys hungry yet? I am freaking so hungry. So we got we got it happening right here, boys. Mm. Let that fish finish up, and we'll be good to go. If you guys have followed the channel this long, you know I really don't do too many cooking videos. But if you guys want to see more of these cooking style videos, let me know in the comments below. Um, I'm happy to do them. I just kind of have to get prepared. Like I said, with this kitchen setup, I mean, look at this. This is <laughs> this is what I'm working with here. So it's a little it's a little janky, but uh, you know, with with the poor lighting, I kind of just do the best I can. So, uh, but yeah, if you guys are into this stuff, let me know. I will certainly try to do more. I got a a few pretty cool panfish recipes that I've kind of concocted over the years 
So, uh, yeah, you know, I'm happy to share them with you guys. There's so many cool ways to cook panfish. I mean, it's it's such a nice, mild, delicate fish. And if you're interested where I got this crappie that I'm cooking right now, hit up the last video that I posted, which was down in Okeechobee with my dad. We're doing some vertical jigging and some really thick cover. I think even the title of it is thick cover crappie jigging or something like that. Check that out. That was a jam up good time. If you guys want to know how we catch these fish and season is still popping right now, I'd say probably for the next month or two. So if you guys have a chance to get down to Lake Okeechobee, do some crappie fishing, now's the time to do it. As we kind of ease into shell cracker and bluegill season, I know uh, Kissimmee Special's tearing them up already and over in Lake Kissimmee. So the shell crackers are on. Um, we just haven't gone out to find them yet and fish for them. But I can tell you, that's fixing to change. So y'all make sure you stay tuned, make sure you're subscribed, and make sure you hit that like button on this video because that helps the YouTube gods serve up this video on a silver platter to everyone else. Woo wee! I mean, slap your mama. I'll tell you what, by the time I'm done eating this meal, I'm gonna be looking like Mac. All right, so I think we are done. Pull these little crispies out. One last sprinkle. Get that out of the way. All right. Time to make a plate. Let's get some of this garlic and chive mash. Mmm. And. Let me get myself a proper spoon for this gravy. Mm. I mean, come on with you. Some of this broccoli. Broccoli is one of my favorite favorite vegetables. So good. Slap me some of these crappie fillets. And there it is. Oh yeah, boys. It'd be good eating. Mmm. That gravy is bomb diggy. Mm. Broccoli steamed to perfection. And you're going to have fried fish. You got to have ketchup. I mean, I don't care what kind of fried fish it is. You got to have ketchup. Mm. Just like that. so freaking good guys I wish you were here to enjoy it with me mm. anyway that's gonna wrap up this video I'm gonna pig out and eat some more of this but thank you guys so much for watching again if you guys like these cooking style videos let me know in the comments below I will do as much as I can to try to pump out more of these and like I mentioned before, I do have some more crappie recipes I can share with you guys. But this Everglades style fried fish, give it, give it a try. I guarantee you will like it. But, mm, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you hit like on the video. And I suppose I'll see you all in the next one. Mm-hmm. Yeah.